definitely, I think for some students, they when they look at a theory book, it's black and white. They're kind of like, oh, that's no fun. You know, it seems mm. a work to them, right? So in Sprout Beats, we try to add a little bit of color. You know, we try to make it kind of fun and short. I think that's the key, you know. Nothing is more than 10, 15 seconds, right? The, the hardest worksheet might take you two minutes, right? So we want to be kind of quick, get to a small concept because kind of target at one concept, make sure you know that before you are on something else. Well, it's great to be back, teachers, with another episode of the TopCast, the official Music Teachers podcast, and you're listening to episode number 202. And I'd like to add a very special welcome to my Top Music Pro teachers out there. How's everyone going? I hope you're all well and safe. And uh, whether you are in the Northern Hemisphere and enjoying your summer or whether you're still working as we are here in Australia, uh, I hope things are going well and uh, you're continuing to enjoy the next uh, 100 episodes on the TopCast. It's wonderful to be here and thank you so much for listening. I know there are even more podcasts around today than ever before, so it really means a lot that you're tuning in to me today. In today's episode, we're chatting to the creators of Sproutbeat, which is an app that can help teachers reinforce what students are learning in their lessons through online worksheets and games. And this even works in online lesson situations. So whether you're moving back to in-person lessons or you're still in an online phase, as we are here in Melbourne during our second lockdown, such fun, then Sproutbeat can be a great support for your teaching. And we're also super excited that all our Top Music Pro members, even those of you on our light $10 a month plan, will be enjoying a pack of free Sprout Beat worksheets as part of your Top Music Sheets release for August. And if you're not really familiar with Top Music Sheets, this is the pack of free sheet music that we share with all our members each and every month. And it's one of our member favorite benefits. You get access to this free sheet music on any of our plans, even on the $10 a month live plan. So if you'd like to find out more about that and all the other benefits of Top Music Pro membership, then head to topmusicpro.com. Today's show notes and transcript are available now at topmusic.co slash episode 202. And I also wanted to mention that at the end of this episode, James and Eck, my two guests, will be offering us a 25% discount off any annual Sprout Beat subscription. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll let you know the details of that right after the interview. My guests today are Eck, Ma, and James Lachlan. Eck, founder of Sprout Beat, is a classically trained pianist, author, and music educator who has been teaching small children to play the piano for about 20 years. She's always believed that if she could make music education more engaging for her students, they would learn faster and retain more information, thus providing the inspiration for Sproutbeat. James Lachlan is co-founder of Sproutbeat and a web developer and entrepreneur. He's a people person who is constantly developing new ideas for online services to make life easier and bring people together. Welcome to the show, Eck and James from Sproutbeat. So cool to see you guys again. Thank you. It's been a little while, in fact, since we last uh, got to hang out. And I think it was San Antonio, MTNA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. James, you introduced me to Whataburger, which is, I know, one of your favorite burger joints. Yes. We thought about buying some, but we ran out of time. Like, we should eat Whataburger. <laughs> and we spent some time at the Riverside and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was just such a great, great event. So uh, really good to reconnect with you guys. Um, and I wanted to just check in. And how has life changed for you guys uh, recently, given we're recording this in mm. late July 2020? We all know what's been happening with the fun of 2020. How's it been affecting you guys? Well... For me, it's a lot uh, less exercise and a lot of food. (laughs) So that's why you only see this part of my (laughs) body. I'm sure it's not true. You both look fantastic. They say, uh, you know, your freshman year, you gain 15 pounds and they call it the freshman 15. Well, we're calling this the (laughs) (laughs) COVID-19. I like it. I like it. And and you guys are in Texas? Yes. Yep. Which part of Texas? Okay. Great. And so, look, tell us a little bit about yourselves. I know a lot of people who have been to conferences would certainly be aware of you, Eck, in particular, because you're always that beautiful, friendly face standing, talking to teachers about the, uh, <laughs> the Sprout Beat app and all the great things it can do for you. But if you don't go to conferences, you might not have met these guys. So, tell us a little bit about yourselves. You're a hubby and wife, uh, husband and wife team, but I think only one of you is a music teacher. So, tell us a little bit about yourselves. All right. Well, I have a master's degree in piano performance. 
So I am the music teacher, but he is the computer guy. So anything that I don't know how to do, he does it. <laughs> Including on the yard. <laughs> right. And James, you've worked, you've worked in computers for most of your career. Yeah, 25 years probably. Yeah. And you've done that as full-time work outside of this. When did, did Eck come to you and go, James, we need a solution for this? Or did you see her like stuffing around with theory sheets and go, okay, I need to solve this problem? Well, if you, if you ask me that question, you're going to get a different answer than if you ask her. My okay. version of it is that um, I saw her struggling and I had solutions that I wanted to steer her in the direction of. I knew that she's going to want to present these assets on a tablet device, right? I, and it, it took a little while for me to kind of steer her in that direction to where she one day she said, can you write up a set of instructions for my teachers to download these worksheets onto their iPad? And I said, no, but <laughs> <laughs> I've got a better idea. And I knew I had her right then. Uh, that's yeah. very, very clever. So, Eck, are you still teaching now? And if so, what, what does your studio look like? Uh, yes, I still teach a little bit. I have a small studio. I only have about six to eight students, you know, from six-year-old to about 13. So it's very small. It makes it easier when I have to travel without having to, like, reschedule everybody. So I like it that way. Mm. You know, it's a small studio. Yeah, I found that keeping my studio small has also helped in this for exactly the same reason. Otherwise, right. you do end up rescheduling all the time. And how do you guys go working together? I, I can only imagine that there must might be some challenges with that. Oh, just a no, little bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> just a tiny bit. Honestly, I've, I did a lot more work in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I, I basically built the first version of Sprout Beat, all of the back end of it. Of course, we hired out the development of, of the iOS application because I'm not a, an iPad or iPhone developer. And then once, once it got up and running, once we got the current version out with the membership solution, it got kind of stable. And my careers kind of was requiring more time. And so I stepped back and she's been running it for the past couple of years, pretty much by herself. Now that we're putting together a new version, we have a development team in Vietnam. And of course, you know, I get brought in to to help kind of translate between the nerds and the non-nerds right. a lot of the time. But for the most part, she's running the day-to-day business. Yes. I just go to him and say, I want to do this. Can it be done? He said, yes. I said, all right, that's all I need to know. Okay. And then he will talk to the developers. She says no as well. <laughs> all right. Well, so look, you better tell uh, everyone listening what Sprout Beat is about. It's not a gardening tool or show. Uh, what, is, what is it about uh, for those who've never heard of it? Well, Sprout Beat is a collection of resources, a lot of for theory, ear training, that kind of thing. We currently have over 2,000 worksheets and over 300 games, interactive games. So the whole idea is to have all these resources at your fingertips. So when you are teaching a student, you know, depending on what situation you're in, you can quickly find something you need on the spot and then work with your student and then move on with lesson. Right. So that was our goal to build a huge library. And so when you started, I'm pretty sure it was more or less about theory and worksheets. Now you've moved into games as well. Is that right? So are these the kind of games that work in online lessons or are they mainly for in-person lessons? Oh, they're great for online lessons because all this, because we have the capability to assign these games and worksheets to a student. So for online lessons, it's great because you put these games or worksheets in their account. And then they can do that at home and send it back to you all through the applications. So there's no holding up your book to your teacher and say, did I get that theory page right? You know, you don't have to do that. Yeah. So everything done, done through the app. Yeah, that's, that's a huge advantage. It's not quite like a Google Doc where you can see your student working, like actually writing things. But once they've submitted it, you mm-hmm. can see it and access it when there's no transfer of paper, right? Right, no transfer of paper. Now, teacher has been screen sharing through Zoom where they can share the screen and the student will use the Zoom annotate tools and they can write on the paper then. So you can do it that way as like a practice and then you can say, all right, now you got it. You know, I'll send this to your account. You can do that at home later after lessons. 
pretty much kind of redo the worksheet again if they but want to do really that with the worksheets which is the first product that we released it was basically a digital version of a paper worksheet and so the student would mark it up and turn it in and the teacher would still have to look at that and grade it and send it back or, or whatever with the interactive games the student can play them as many times as they want they can you know score points and the teacher doesn't have to grade those the teacher just gets presented with a report of you know student Johnny played this game, you know, 10 times and, and got this total score. And it, it becomes uh, a lot easier for the teachers because they're not sitting there grading papers. Mm. And where did the name come from? <laughs> so when our kids were little, you know, we watched this kids little TV show. And I remember there was a little logo that always pop up on the screen. It's like this little seed growing into like a plant, like it's sprouting. And mm-hmm. I always loved the idea, you know, from nothing, it grew into something, right? Something bigger, something stronger. Mm-hmm. So we always like the word sprout, right? So we came up with like sprout something, you know, we try to add another word to it. Mm-hmm. it. It never worked. And I remember one day James came in and said, how about beat? Like the music, the beat. Yeah. So, oh yeah, sprout beats. That sounds cool. Yeah. But we didn't have a product. It was, <laughs> that was about four or five years before we did sprout beats. <laughs> so we're like, okay, great, name. So what are we going to do with that? <laughs> I don't know. I just had this vision of a, a, I remember I was sitting in that chair right over there, and I just had this vision of a, an eighth note and, you know, the seed and the stem and the leaf. And it just, it just really hit me that, I mean, the, the logo and the name just kind of sprang fully formed as like, that's it. Mm. And... Now we got to figure out what we're going to do with it. And right. we got to build something. <laughs> Can't let this great logo and name go to waste. <laughs> so were you guys thinking you would like to supplement your incomes and do something different, but you just didn't know what it was? Yeah, a little bit like that. I knew I wanted to do more than just teaching, you know. So I, I tested out just creating worksheets, you know, for my students because there is a need also, right? I always have a handful of students that need extra work. You know, they just don't quite get it. like quickly, like most Mm. kids, right? They need a little extra help, which is fine. But I was writing out a lot in their, you know, paper, everything. I feel like I'm recreating it every time. So I get a little frustrated. So I started to create like worksheets, but then I started printing them and I didn't want them to do the same one every time. So I want to do different ones. It just snowball, and before we know it, I have like 300 worksheets. They were like, wait, this is going crazy. What are we going to do with that? Yeah. Even when we met like uh, 25 yeah. years ago, I think one of the things that, that she told me when we were first getting to know each other, she was, a music, she was getting her master's degree in music performance, but we met in a, a C programming class. Yes. Oh, really? So you're interested and in programming And I was like, what, what are you doing in a programming class? And she said, I have this dream. I want to create music theory games. Huh. And this is 25 years ago. And it took that long for all of those things to come together. Of course, my career as a developer and, a, and an entrepreneur and, and her developing this teaching style and, and all of these assets that she used to teach. And finally, I think we, we were coming back from Malaysia in 2011 or 2012. And we were sitting in the airport in Kuala Lumpur and we thought, you know what? We, we've got to do something. Do something. <laughs> You know, I mean, we're, we've got such two different skill sets. How do we put those together? And so we started working on Sprout Beat. Very cool. And we're very glad you have. So what do you think is the main pain point or struggle that teachers have that Sprout Beat can solve? Yeah, for me, the biggest problem that I have when it was, you know, before all this is try to find extra resources that I need. You know, after they have completed the theory book, you know, they did everything in their book, but they still need more, right? So this is when I kind of go, oh, I wish there was something I can get to it really quickly and I don't have to go write or create new ones. So I think for me is that. I think also sometimes during lessons when they play a piece, you notice all of a sudden they've forgotten a concept that you thought they knew, right? But there's nothing available in the current theory book or anywhere. So you need to like, okay, pause, Let's think about this. You got it. Okay, now move on. I think that is a good use of Sprout You know, during lessons, what do you need help with? 
mm. right there, right then. And you'll be able to quickly find that. Yes. Yeah, without sort of going to your folder of loose leaf sheets that are all falling out of your binders and et cetera. Yes. Yeah. I, look, I know all too well, <laughs> you know, I've got some worksheets in a filing cabinet, some are in my shelf, some are under the piano behind, have probably they've fallen behind the piano. I know all teachers can resonate with what you're saying. And yeah. do you think there's also an element of paper worksheets being a bit boring or lame for students and maybe because they're so used to playing games on iPads and things that this can actually increase their desire to want to do these things? Definitely. I think for some students, they when they look at a theory book, it's black and white. They're kind of like, oh, that's no fun. You know, it seems mm. of work to them, right? So in Sprout we try to add a little bit of color. You know, we try to make it kind of fun and short. I think that's the key. You know, nothing is more than 10, 15 seconds, right? The, the hardest worksheet might take you two minutes, right? So we want to be kind of quick, get to a small concept because kind of target at one concept, make sure you know that before you are on something else. So we do that for, uh, um, for that reason. But uh, definitely kids like to play games, right? Mm. So we want to find something that is more interesting, that they've, then they will be more willing and happy to do the things that we want them to do. And that's why we built the uh, interactive games. Mm. And there's yeah. no doubt that one of the best ways to learn anything in life is through a game because you kind of yeah. don't know that you're learning. So that makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense. Do you come up with all the worksheets and all the games yourself, Eck, or are you, have you got people helping you do this? No, it's all, all me and you. chocolate. Me and chocolate. <laughs> she's like, and she's snacks. a machine. I tell people she's a, a content machine. You just put chocolate in <laughs> yep. and content comes out. Uh, it's quite true. I do expand to ice cream now. Yeah. So chocolate, ice cream, <laughs> chips. You guys are looking great. I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed if that's the, uh, the way it works. You're looking great. It's, it's the filter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I know one of the more recent features that you've added has been a way to organize things inside your own account. So a teacher, when they log in, you don't have to search for things all the time. You can kind of organize them. Can you tell us how that works? Yeah, so we do organize the worksheets for the teachers, you know, by topics. But I know the way I do it doesn't mean all teachers think that way. So we do have a My Folder section where the teachers can create their own folder. They can create like subfolders to go with it. So you could potentially create a folder, say, you know, method book A, if that's the book you use all the time. And in it, you create uh, level one or unit one, unit two, you know, just kind of further organize it. So when your student comes, you'd be like, oh, you're in method A level or unit three. Let's look at what we have to do, you know, and everything that you collected will be in there. Mm, Great. That's kind of like favoriting things then as well. If I could brag on her for just a minute, she she would never say this herself, but she puts a lot of effort into helping teachers be the best that they can be in their way of teaching. I've asked her many times, well, why don't you write a method? And she said, no, no, that's not me. I don't want to tell people how to teach. I just want to support them in whatever way they do teach. I don't know how to tell them how yeah. to teach. <laughs> she's, she's, she's really, really humble that way. And she's really good at, at um, you wouldn't believe how many hours she spends agonizing over what text should yeah. be on a button. Know. You know, That's she just she just agonizes over that to, to the point of insanity. And it all comes from a place of trying to make it as easy and as, as frictionless as possible for the teachers. Mm. She's really good at it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's something that I, I love doing as well. I, I agree. Uh, dictating to teachers. Teachers don't always like to be told what to do. Right, you right. and I know that we're teachers, and <laughs> but to be given the the idea of something or the way to improve something as a almost as an aside can be a really great way, a powerful way to do it because teachers go, oh yeah, I really like that. I'm going to try that out, and then suddenly yeah. they can find all the other great things that you've created for them, Eck, and it's, it becomes a regular part of their teaching, which I think is fantastic. So the app itself is designed for iPad, I know, uh, but not Android but Android users can still access it. Maybe this is a question for James. Sure. Yeah, we, I can ask them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually uh, uh, built a web-based applications. So if you have an Android computer, you could actually go to you know, our web app and access all these games and worksheets. Mm-hmm. Great. So you can do it on a yeah. laptop, desktop, anything at all. 
Yeah. Right. But if you do have right. an iPad, then there's a native app for that. Right. There is. Right. And, and, and the, 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 the native app, we initially went with the native app because of the quality of drawing. The library that the, the, the native app uses, it's much more fluid. Okay. This is when students use their finger or a pen to right. write. Right, or using their finger in drawing. And so initially we thought that was going to be really, really important. And, and it is. Uh, the quality is, is important at times. But as we move away from the worksheets and more towards the games, we wanted to find a way to, to open it up to other users. And the web based Right. Yeah. And that and that makes a lot of sense. Because I know <laughs> I know from my own experience that trying to update different platforms all the time and things is a real pain. So good choice. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, so let's say I'm I'm a new uh, new teacher. I've just downloaded your app. I could imagine it could be very overwhelming if you've got two thousand things in there. So what am I gonna see when I first open it? Am I gonna be guided a little bit to find what I need first up? Yeah, so the contents are organized by subject. So you will find folders like, say, five finger pattern, you know, not reading, chords, primary triad, scales, you know, directional reading. So they will be in folders already. So you would just click on it and say, hey, look what's in directional reading folders. So if you're working on music alphabet, then you go find the folder that say music alphabet. So when you open it up, you might still see 40 worksheets in there. So you kind of have to say, okay, which one does that look good to me? Oh, I like that one. And then you can select those and then organize it, put it in your own folder to say, hey, I'm going to use this with my first lesson students because that would be fun for the first time lesson kids to come and do. So you can just kind of go through it. I have to say that there is a lot of content in there. So you might not want to go through all of them in one day. Mm -hmm. But if you try to kind of study like, three folders a day to kind of know what's all in there, it will really help a lot. Right. And so would you have something for, I mean, common problem, rhythmic problem would be uh, students first reading a dotted quarter eighth note. Mm -hmm. So would that be a sheet that I could find in there or would that be part of a rhythmic pattern that you would have in other sheets? Yeah. So we actually have a worksheet that talk about dotted quarter note in there like how does it work you start with this and then the dot was because of the eighth note that's why we have one and two you know something like that so right. yeah that would be under the rhythmic folder that you okay, can cool. find like syncopated rhythm things like that great and we have heard the customers saying that uh they would like to be able to go and, and search so that's one of the big the features of our next version that we're working on is adding that search capability so they don't have to guess which folder that would be. Oh, okay, great. So, well, what, let's talk about the new, some new features. What, what else is coming out in the new version? And will this be a new iPad app as well, like an update to the app? Uh, it's going to be an update to the web app first. We're not okay. sure if you're going to touch a native app just yet, but we definitely want to do the web app. So the biggest thing here, there are three, three big things. We are combining the worksheets and the games platforms into one. So right now they're on two separate places, the games and the worksheets. You are two websites, two URLs? Right, two okay. applications right it's, now. It's one, it's one membership, right. but you have okay. to go to two different places. places. Okay, got it. If you go to leap.sproutmeet.com for, for the games and then, and then app.sproutmeet.com right. for ah, the... Ah, I see. Okay, so you're going to merge them together. Yep. Yes, yeah, so now we're going to combine them together. So that's the big thing. So the second sense. thing would be adding the search function. So now you can type in syncopation. Then we can, whoop, oh, mm. here are the contents for syncopation. What would you, you know, want to pick? You know, maybe games or maybe worksheets. And then another thing we're going to do is tag the contents for method books mm -hmm. or any kind of specialized curricula. Clever. So if there's a special book out there people use all the time, we can tag them for level one, unit one. You just go in there, here are the contents you need if you use that book. So okay. once again, this is where I want to point out how almost manic she is about <laughs> making things easy for the customers because what she's not telling you is those last two things, the tagging and the searching, is going to mean that she's going to have to spend hours upon hours upon hours going through all of those 2,000 worksheets and 300 games, games <laughs> and tagging them with the yes. right tags and organizing them so that people can find them. So yeah. the next time you see me, I'll about 
this wide with lots of chocolate on my face. You know, an ice cream dripping down or something. I don't know. But we'll have yes. a fabulous app to use in the process. Right. Uh, I mean, everything's a trade off, right? right? <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. So I've, I've just got that image in my mind. Um, <laughs> that's great. So do you, with the lockdowns and uh, the pandemic, did anything particular change in your app or was it already kind of set up that it suited that w- way of teaching? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't change anything at all because we have the capability for online theory assignments. You know, we started doing that back in 2016. So what happened is we have teachers all of a sudden wanted to sign up with the plans that they can assign to the students. So it turns out really great, you know, turns out a great tool for a lot of teachers mm. who are doing online lessons right now, yeah. And when you mentioned a little bit earlier that you can mirror your iPad. So if you're on Zoom, for example, so you're, you've got, I'm, I'm a teacher, I've got Sprout Beat, I've got a worksheet on my iPad in my studio. I can mirror that to the students so it will come up on their screen. Are you right. saying that they can, you can then sort of talk them through, okay, so have a look at the first row here. Which one would you circle? You mm-hmm. would have to do the circling on your one, right? No? No, because they have they can use the annotation tool from Zoom. Right. So they can annotate. So the students can circle it on their screen. Oh great. It wouldn't okay, show cool. up on the it wouldn't show up like permanently. permanently. It's not on the te- it doesn't show up on the yeah. Team. Yeah, yeah. It's but it's just, just using a feature from Zoom yes. to mimic what you would be doing if you were doing it on your iPad. Oh, so. that's cool. That's great. No, yeah. I know I teachers also Teachers will use it for group lessons so mm-hmm. they can put up a worksheet and they'll maybe have three kids in the group. Then they can say, all right, Mary, find me the treble clef, for example. And then Mary will use the annotation tool. She will pick red, for example. She'll circle mm-hmm. it. And then the next students might pick a different color and then he can circle whatever. So they can kind of just share that screen that you share with your students. And it's almost like screen. having one of those, what are those magic, those big boards? Whiteboard. Kind of magic yeah, whiteboard. kind of like yeah. a magic whiteboard thing that they have in the schools. Yeah, that's clever. I hadn't thought of that, that approach. It makes a lot of sense. Really good. All right. Well, I'm going to start wrapping things up, but I wonder, given that you have so much experience with theory and games, have you got like maybe three or five tips that aside from Sprout Beat that you've learned over the years that teachers could just take away with them now and, and try if they're, if they're looking to do some theory with their students or awesome games? Just a couple of quick tips of how you approach it or why you think it's a good thing, et cetera. I actually like the most doing during lessons, especially when they're learning, like playing their piece, and I see a disconnect in their mm. playing. If they were like skipping over all the articulations, they're not paying attention to staccato or legato, that's when I say, okay, pause, time out, and I'll pull up a worksheet that's going to focus on articulations, for example. I'll play on the piano, and I'll say, okay, you mark all the articulations that I play. You know, or I'll say you play and I'll mark and then did I do that right? You know, just to kind of have them stop and think about that one thing they were missing. And then mm. once we go through that a few times, I say, okay, now go back to your piece and see, did you see the staccato and legato? You know, and then I'll try to play that way, you know, what we just did, right? Yeah. So, and then reinforce that with assignments yes, to them so yes. that they can do those when they get exactly. home. Exactly. And then yeah. after that, you can say, okay, now we talked about that, go home and do this. I think that's the real advantage here too, because while I might think of something I could do in that circumstance once, you know, the next time might be three months down the track and I might've forgotten what I did that was so good. And this is where having a reference like Sprout Beat, you can go, oh, I'm just going to look in my folder because I remember I did something on this yeah, topic yeah. last time. Um, right. I, could see that, I could see that being a huge advantage here. Yeah. So that's great. Where do teachers go to sign up then if they want to check this out? Uh, they just go to our website, sprawbeat.com. You know, they can spra- sign up there. There's a pricing thing. Great. And who, yeah. who actually pays? Does the teacher pay for the student? How, how does all that work? Yeah, the teacher pays. So we have different plans. So depending on what the teacher wants to do for their studio, they can just play for the worksheet platform. Is they say, you know what, I'll never use the games. I don't like the games. I just want to do this. That's, they can just purchase the worksheet. Or they can purchase just the games or they can do the combo. Okay. Right. And then they also can purchase the plan where we can add student license because they want to assign it to their students. So we make it very flexible, you know, to say, well, it's really all depend what you want to do. You can upgrade your plan or you can downgrade. You can try it this way. If you don't like it, okay, move it to something else. Yeah, that sort of thing. But she's also 
we've done a lot of work with teachers to help them understand, you know, when you say it's teacher pay, a lot of teachers are going to think, oh, well, I don't have the money to, to spend on that, right? And we all know that the, the teachers don't have the money, that the students are the ones that really have the money, right? And so she's done a lot of work to do the math to figure out how teachers can charge a little bit extra because of the, the added benefit you get out of Sprout Beat by adding that to your, your lessons. And she's really been good about helping teachers figure out how they can actually make money. Mm. And there's a lot of teachers out there that, that have spent, you know, a half an hour, hour on the phone with her and, and they've come away buying a, a, a big membership with, with lots of student licenses because they figured out they're going to be making X number of dollars more mm. per month just by having Sprout Beat on their curriculum. Because, you know, as a parent, five more dollars a month to you is like, what, five more dollars? Okay. But it doesn't even cost five dollars for the teacher. Mm. But as a teacher, sometimes we're so worried about raising our fees. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wait, five dollars a month? But really, as a parent, you'd be like, oh, five dollars here. No, no problem. You know, <laughs> yeah. Let's not talk yeah. about it anymore, right? When, you're, when the, the students are pulling up in BMWs and Mercedes, <laughs> You know, they could probably afford it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a very clever approach. And I know you've got information on your website about that and how that program works and things. So it, you're effectively using it as a marketing strategy for teachers. They can say that, hey, this, this is a, an added feature of lessons in my studio. Here's how it works. And it's an extra $5 or whatever. Or you, you build that right. into your pricing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, really and cool. also, it's a good way for teachers to have the extra money to get new iPads, you know, because lots of times teachers come to us and say, oh, my iPad is like six years old. It won't run anymore. It's so expensive. But we use this tool with our students all the time, mm. right? So in a way, it makes sense that students can chip in a little bit to help us get the better mm -hmm. uh, iPad or whatever device that you use for your students. So this is another good way to, you know, just get a little help for the teacher. Sounds great. And I think you're offering us even a little bit more help with a bit of a discount for our listeners today. So tell us about that. All right. So usually our uh, yearly plan, our annual plan, we give two free months. So you pay for 10 months and you get 12 months of access, right? So what we're doing is we're offering additional 25% for the first year if they were to sign up for the annual plan. Fantastic. All right. And we've got the coupon code. It's on the uh, show notes for today's episode. So you can find out more about that and um, we'll have all the details that we've talked about and links to the information on Sproutbeat on the show notes page as well. So guys, thanks heaps for that. Is there anything we haven't covered that um, you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm, I can't believe Tim didn't ask me about this? No, I no. Thank you very much for doing this. Pleasure. As I say, it's it's been way too long. I've known for so so long <laughs> how good Sproutbeat is. I've had so much fun with it myself. So I'm yeah. only too glad to be able to tell everyone the great work you're doing. So thank you for all of that. Thanks for hanging out with me today and um, wish you all the best. Thank well, you. Thank you. See ya. See ya. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's chat with Eck and James. Uh, if you haven't met them at conferences before, when conferences are back, make sure you go and hang out. Uh, it's a very fun booth to always drop into and say hi. Uh, Eck is just so full of energy and, uh, of course, her products and services for teachers are second to none. Now, I mentioned the coupon code at the start of today's episode. So, if you would like to save 25% on an annual plan, this is a discount for your first year, then you can use the coupon code TOPMUSIC2020. So that's TOPMUSIC2020. And you can enter that in to the coupon code when you subscribe to any of uh, the Sproutbeat annual plans. Now, if, you wanna, if you're kind of listening and driving and can't write that down, that's no trouble. All you have to do when you get home is go to topmusic.co slash episode 202 and we'll pop this into our show notes. And if you do need any help at any time or have any questions about Sproutbeat, then just send them a quick email, support at sproutbeat.com. And a final reminder too, that if you are a Top Music Pro member on any of our plans, then you're going to grab a free pack of Sproutbeat worksheets that you can either print and use in person or you can use on your iPad. Uh, you can grab any of those in our academy now. So next week on the podcast, we're going to be meeting two amazing teachers from Australia here. One of them's called Chaley Hinkler and also Elise Jeffrey. They're two teachers I met at Piano Pivot Live in January. And we're going to find out what exciting results they've experienced in 2020 as a result of their Piano Pivot Live attendance 
and how their studios are going. And you won't believe some of the achievements and successes they've enjoyed. We'll also be letting you know next week about a super discount that we'll be offering all listeners for access to all our Piano Pivot Live live on stage recordings from January. So if you haven't already got access to those, you won't want to miss that because you'll, as you'll hear when I interview my two guests next week, they uh, talk up a couple of our um, speakers from the stage and the great thing is that you can actually go and access and listen to those presentations. If you heard about an event, product or service today that you didn't have a chance to write down, don't worry. As I said, we list everything you've heard about in the episode show notes. So you can just head to topmusic.co slash episode 202. I'm Tim Topham and you've been listening to the Topcast from topmusic.co. I'll see you next time. For more information about this episode and to find out how to enhance your own teaching, visit topmusic.co. You'll find everything you need for your studio from lesson plans to cheat sheets, quick win teaching ideas and guides on how to build your teaching business. Plus, you'll be connected to a global community of the world's top music teachers. And when you're ready, join hundreds of other teachers around the world by becoming a Top Music Pro member and get access to all our bonus content and flagship courses. And don't forget to follow topmusic.co on social media and subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it. That's all for today. We'll see you in the studio.